In this video, I'll cover everything you need to know about NestJS queue, what it is, how it works behind the scenes, and a quick demo on how to set up and use it in your Nest application. But before we start, let's quickly understand what a queue essentially is. A queue is a data structure that follows the first in first out principle, meaning that the first element added to the queue will be the first one to be removed. Think of it like a line of people waiting for a service where the person who arrives first is served first. Nest provides a package Nest Bull, which is a wrapper on top of Bull. Bull is a popular, high performance, no JS based queue system implementation. Now, Bull is built on top of Redis and uses it to persist job data. So, in order to use Bull, we need to have Redis installed on our system. Bull queue works on the producer consumer pattern. Producer adds job to the queue with specified payload and optional config. The job is serialized and stored in Redis database, making it available for processing. Jobs are processed by worker processes. These workers can run on the same server or be distributed across multiple servers. When a worker starts, it connects to the Redis server and begins listening for jobs on the specified queue. When a job becomes available, the worker dequeues it processes the job's payload, and executes the specified processing logic. If a job fails during processing, you can configure bull to handle retries with back-off strategies. Failed jobs are moved to a designated failed queue, and you can inspect and retry them as needed. That was all about bull queue and how it works. Next, let's see a quick demo on how to use it in our application. Now, in order to use bull queue, we need to have Redis installed on our system. Now, either we can install it locally, or we can use a docker image. Now for this tutorial, I'll use the docker image. So head over to docker. If you have installed docker, that's pretty good. If not, you can download it for Windows or Mac. Then head over to command terminal and just type docker v. If it is installed, you'll get the version. Now once you have installed docker, you can install the Redis image. So for that, you can just type docker pull and the uh, image name which is redis it installed the redis image on your docker desktop now for my case it is already installed so that's why it pulled immediately but if it is not installed on your system it will take some time now once we have redis let's open the docker desktop now we can run the container uh, via command line as well but also we can do it via de docker desktop so I'll head over to desktop and just I'll just click run. Now we have optional settings. We can define the container name. I'll name it as Redis. And for ports, default is 6379. So we don't have to change it. I can just click run. So our Redis image is running. Now since we have set up Redis on our system, we can focus on our Nest application. Here I've created a simple Nest app and added a user module with a route to allow users to upload files on S3. Now in controller you might have noticed that I haven't awaited this call to user service. Because if in case user uploaded a bigger sized file and I don't want user to wait for the response until the file is uploaded to S3. Instead, I'll immediately send 200 with a success message. An image upload can happen in background. So far everything is fine. Then why do we need bull queue here? The reason is simple. File upload is a resource intensive task which means that it will take your server resources like CPU and memory in order to process and upload file on S3 or any other hosting service. But a single request won't make any effect. Consider getting thousands of concurrent requests where users are uploading multiple files of let's say 10 MB each. All these requests will asynchronously handled in the background which will eventually need more resources and hence your server will shut down when limit exceeds. In order to resolve this issue, we can add this request to bull queue. Bull will store these jobs in Redis which will be dequeued and processed by worker processes. This way, instead of processing the file upload in current request response cycle, we'll handle it asynchronously. Now let's add bull to our application. Let's first install the required bull packages. So we'll install the bull package and its wrapper for NestJS. Once the packages are installed, we can head over to app module to register the bull module config. Now in ports, we can add the bull module and press enter. This will auto import the bull module from NestJS bull. Then we can add the for root method. This for root accepts and config. Now, if I quickly head over to Nest documentation, 
we can see that these are the properties that is accepted by this an object. Now we can see if we want to configure the Redis connection, we can use the Redis property. Let's register that. So I can just type Redis and it accepts an object that has host and port. Now by default port is 6379. For host, since we are running Redis on Docker, we have to define the IP of the Docker container. So to get the IP, we can open the command terminal and just write docker ps. This will list all the running containers. Now we can see that our Redis container ID is this one. We can just copy this and type docker inspect and can paste our container ID. Now we'll get this object. All we need to care about is this IP address. We can copy this IP address and this is our host. We can just paste it here and we have configured our Redis connection. Now once we have configured our Redis connection, let's proceed to register our queue. Head over to user module and add imports property. Next let's add pull module and import the register queue method. This method accepts object as an argument. Let's add the name property. And define the name of the queue. Let's name it file upload. Now optionally if we want to register multiple queues, we can add a comma and add another object and we can name it something else. Let's say another queue. That's how we can register multiple queues. But for this tutorial we don't want to uh, register multiple queues. So I'll remove it. So this register queue method is used to instantiate or register a queue. So as we learned previously that bull uses redis to persist job data. So whenever your app is started or restarted, Bull will check if there are any unfinished jobs in the previous session for this queue. If yes, then it will execute those jobs. And that's it, we have registered our queue. Now if you have multiple Redis instances and you have registered multiple queues and you want that your different queue should use the different Redis instance, let's head over to app module and register a new config. For this case, I'll provide a different Redis instance. Let's say. My different instance is pointing is running at this IP. Now we can see that there is no difference in these two configs. So for the alternate config, we can define a name. Let's say I'll name it alternate config. Now if we see that by default our queue is using the default config. Now if we want that our queue should point to this alternate config, we can add another property called config key. And we can add our config name which is alternate config and now our queue is pointing to the alternate config next let's add a job to our queue in my user service i'll add a constructor now in order to inject queue i'll use the inject queue decorator which is imported from nestable package now this decorator accepts the queue name so i'll pass the queue name here which is file upload and then i'll provide the variable with which we'll access the queue. This will be of type queue, which will be imported from bull package. Now next, instead of directly calling upload to S3, I'll add this job to the queue. So in order to add that, I'll use my file upload variable and then call the add method. Now this add method accepts an object. Now this object could be anything. We can use it to define our payload structure, which in this case will be this one. So I'll just copy and paste it. Now since this is an object, I need to provide the keys as well. Now we can remove this. If we see the return type of add method, it's, it returns a promise. So we can await this call. Now we have added our first job to the queue. Now optionally we can also name our job. So before the data we can pass a string to name our job. Let's say this job is to upload images. Now whenever we create a named job we need to create a processor as well to process this job. Otherwise bull will complain that there is no processor to process this named job. Now jobs do support additional options as well. So after we have provided the data, add a comma and add another object to provide the options. 
Now if we press control space or command space on Mac, we'll get to see all the available properties. So we'll have attempts, back off, delay, and returns of other properties as well. Let's use delay in for our case. And let's add 3000 milliseconds. So what this means is that after a delay of three seconds, this job is available to be processed by worker processes. Next, let's quickly check if the job is added to the queue. So after this line, I'll add a console log. Let's build our application. So I'll type docker build hyphen t to define the tag and define the name of our image, which is nest app, let's say, and use dot to include all the files. Now, once the image is built, we can run it in a container. To do that, we can run docker run hyphen p to define the port, which is 3000. It should map to the 3000 port hyphen d to run it in detached mode and then name of our image, which is nest app. And this will run our image in a container. So if I open docker, docker desktop and open containers, our app is running. Now, if I open Postman and hit this endpoint, I'll get status as 200 with a message. Now, if I again open Docker Desktop, we can get the log. The job is added to the queue. Next, we can add a consumer class and worker processes to process these jobs. Let's open VS Code again and add a new consumer class. So in the same user directory, I'll add a new file called user.process.es. I'll export a new class and name it as user file upload. Now to define this class as a consumer class, we need to decorate it with processor decorator, which is important from the nestable package. And we need to provide the name of our queue, which is file upload. Now in the consumer class, we can define a method, let's say handle file upload. Now to define it as a worker process, we need to decorate it with process decorator. And optionally, we can define the name of our job, which, which this worker process will listen to. So previously, we created a name job called upload image. So this worker process will listen for this job. Also, this method now will accept an argument called job, which is of type job, which is imported from bull package. Now for now, let's console log this job, what we have in the job.data. Now before we hit the endpoint, we need to register this consumer class as a provider so that nest bull package can pick them up. So in user module, in providers, I can add it, this user file upload. Let's import it. Let's build the image again. Let's hit the endpoint. We got this job is added to the queue and also we got the data. Now the reason we got the data previously as well, because we added the job two times so those jobs got executed next let's update our handler method now this method should call the upload to s3 function let's import that so we'll call upload to s3 that will auto import now we need these four parameters that we can get from this job data let's extract those and that's it. We are done with our worker process. This decorated method is called whenever the worker is idle and there are jobs to process in the queue. This handler method receives the job object as its only argument. The value returned by the handler method is stored in the job object and can be handled later on. For example, in a listener for the completed event. Next, let's explore the event listeners. Event listeners must be declared within a consumer class. Bull generates a set of useful events when a queue or job state changes occur. Now here I have defined two events on queue active which will be called when the job is in progress and on queue completed which will be called when the job is completed. 
both of these events will be imported from the nest bull package now if i head over to nest documentation we can see the list of all the available local and global event listeners now let's run our application and see this in action i'll build the image first and then run it in, in a container I'll hit the endpoint again and then let's see the logs. So the job was added to the queue and after 3 seconds that the delay we added, the job is processed by the worker process and we got our logs. So we got the log when the job was in progress and when it was completed. And there you have it. I hope this video clarified any doubts you had. If you enjoyed this video and want more content like this, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for upcoming videos on web development. I'll see you in the next video.